leadership is not given but taken. Those were the exact words when now retired President Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta, the fourth president of the Republic of Kenya, said during his last term as the president of Kenya. Welcome to Zafarani TV, a Kenyan online political platform where I talk about the Kenyan politics and what happens within political circles. If this is your first time to be here, welcome on board. Take a few seconds, hit the subscribe button, and please don't forget to hit the notification button so that every time I upload new content, you'll be notified. Well, maybe these words haunt him till date because maybe if things fell the way he wanted them to, then his preferred candidate Raila Amolo Odinga would be the current president of Kenya. Seems like things are already heated up in the Mount Kenya region. The battle of the mountains, kingship, has already geared up and nothing seems to, t to stop, none other than Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwam. Gashagwam, the second in command in the country after President William Ruto, seems to read from the same script that the then deputy used during Uhuru Kenyatta's last term in office. For the then deputy, the rule and game was simple. He used, he used a tactic called sympathy. He earned it as the then deputy as the then president never shied away from criticizing the deputy in the glares of media and the entire country. Kieni member of parliament has recently come out and shown a hand of gesture to retired president Uhuru Kenyatta, where he publicly advised the retired head of state to hand over the Mount Kenya kingship throne to none other than deputy president Rigadi Gashagwam. He was speaking during a public gathering where he indicated that they were ready to take gifts to the retired head of state to show gratitude for the amazing job he did for the country during his tenure as the president of Kenya. In what it seems like a political buyout, seems Gashagwa has started showing his presidential ambitions way too early, even before his boss, President William Ruto, has ended his first term in office as the president of Kenya. His close allies have been defending Gashagwan during public meetings where they've declared way too many times that their son shouldn't suffer under their watch. Gashagwan is speculated to have had a rift with his boss, President William Ruto, way too many times, and Kenyans go to get a glimpse of it, how the show really went down behind the powerful corridors of power. Influential politicians who served and are allied to different and powerful positions within the government have on many occasions thrown jabs on the former head of state, showing disrespect to Uhuru Kenyatta. But the million dollar question is, and I quote, why would Gashagwa seek the support of his allies to clearly tell Uhuru Kenyatta to give up the kingship battle within the Mount Kenya region and hand it over to him instead? End quote. Gashagwa is a man of many faces. He wants leadership, but he can't afford to take it by both of his hands. Gashagwa loves taking the back seat and giving the front seat to his allies. Gashagwa is trying his best to put things in order way before the much anticipated 2027 elections where he wants to make sure no stone is left unturned. Gashagwa doesn't want surprises in the end, but when we speak with honesty, how the game of politics is being placed Gashagwa must also keep in mind that politics is a game of numbers and he can attest that from wiper leader Kalonzo Musioka. Everything is planned and strategized. Every nitty gritty detail is mastered to the point of being perfect. 
But isn't Gashagwa too quick to forget that there are also politicians with great influence from the mountain region who would still want the same opportunity to lead Kenyans within that region? Gashagwa is clearly forgetting that we have NAC leader Martha Karua who has not only shown interest as a presidential candidate in the past, but is also an active member of the Azimio, Co Azimio coalition. We also have WIPA leader Kalonzo Musioka, who not only served influential and high-ranking positions in the previous regimes, but also served as a vice president, known today as the deputy president post. Kalonzo has influential and strong support from the Kamba community and has always been determined to lead this great nation of Kenya one day. Gashagwa seems like he wants everything to work out so fast for him at a go. Patience should be on top of his priority list. He must serve Kenyans first, understand what leadership and kingship is before coming out to demand from the retired President Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta indirectly through his allies that it's time he hands over the kingship mantle to him. On the other hand, it's way too early for Gashagwa to start all these campaign shenanigans as it not only portrays him as an overambitious politician who has just tested power as the second command in command after the head of state, but also as a clueless leader who wants to take Kenyans eventually to Egypt. As President William Ruto has secured all the loopholes in every corners in the country politically, it is clearly evident that, despite the deputy president's ambitions, isn't clearly reading from the same script with him as the country is trying to come back on 